Finding and Using Images, Part 1, Week 3 Lesson. Here are some common questions about finding and using images for e-learning. If an image is online, doesn't that mean it's free for me to use? Don't I have the freedom to using copyright images if it's for an educational purpose? How do I know when I can use an image online? The internet makes finding and sharing resources today very easy, including visual and image resources. You could use a basic search engine such as Google or Yahoo and come up with thousands of images results. However, just because these images are available on the web doesn't mean that they're completely free to use. While the internet does make it easier to search for and find various resources, this creates even more confusion on the guidelines and rights for using these resources in personal, commercial, and educational settings. Do you have permission to use these resources even for educational purposes? How do you know when you have permission to use a resource? Copyright, Fair Use, and Creative Commons are three sets of guidelines that state the protection rules and rights for utilizing resources. While the information in each of these areas can be extensive, it's always a good idea as an educator to have a basic understanding of the rules and your rights for using resources and images in your online courses. Copyright, all rights reserved. Copyright is a law that grants protection for original works of authorship from being used or manipulated without the expressed written permission of the author. Copyright exists the moment an original work has been created in a tangible form. A tangible form that is subject to copyright if it is an original work can include items such as a novel, artwork, recorded music, computer software, photographs, a blog post, or a web page, just to name a few. Items that do not qualify for copyright protection include things like stated facts, ideas, or duplications of items in the public domain. For more information of what is protected by copyright, I recommend visiting the U.S. Copyright Office website. You will find the link on your handout. So before you decide to use an item, check to see if it's protected by copyright, what the rights of the author are, and what permissions you have or may need to obtain in order to use that work. I would recommend reading Who Owns That for more information on how to interpret who owns something you may find on the internet. You can find the link on your handout. The public domain, no rights reserved. Although copyright protects original works, this protection is not indefinite. If an item was not renewed for copyright, published in the U.S. before 1923, published between 1923 and 1978 without a notice of copyright or renewal, or is created after March 1st, 1989, it is in what is known as the public domain. Items in the public domain are no longer protected by copyright, ineligible for copyright protection, or has an expired copyright. No permission is needed to use any work if it is in the public domain, although it's still considered good practice to cite your sources. You can visit the page Determining Copyright Status for more detailed information. The Copyright Slider provides a great way to check when an item is considered to be in the public domain. I also recommend the Public Domain Overview from the University of California for a good overview of the public domain and the work that falls under this category. You can find the links to these resources on your handout. However, what if you created an original work and want to be attributed for that work, but still want to give others access to use that in order to create new forms of expression? That's when Creative Commons come into play. Creative Commons, some rights reserved. Between the spectrum of all rights reserved and no rights reserved, there is a some rights reserved area for the use of works known as Creative Commons. Creative Commons works alongside copyright protection and rules by providing licenses to authors stating how their works can be used by the public. These licenses also inform users how they are able to use the works and credit the original author. 
The purpose of Creative Commons is to allow authors to open their works up for additional creative forms of expression while still remaining legal and maintaining control over their original ownership. There are six different licenses that an author can select when using a Creative Commons license in relation to their work, and more than one can be used for the same item. Let's review them. Attribution. Others can use, rework, and distribute your work and work based on it, commercially and non-commercially, but only if they give credit in a way specifically requested by you. Attribution. Share alike. Others can share, distribute your work commercially and non-commercially, only if they give you credit and follow the same rules the work was published under. Attribution, no derivatives. Work can be redistributed commercially and non-commercially. As long as it remains completely unchanged and whole and credit to the original author. Attribution, non-commercial. Work can be used, reworked, distributed, non-commercially. Resulting new works must credit the original author and be non-commercial, but the original licenses don't have to be used for the new work. Attribution non-commercial, share alike. Work can be used, reworked, distributed non-commercially, and credit to the original author and keeping the same licenses. Others can download and share work, but can produce new work based on your work, still keeping the original license and using non-commercially. And finally, attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives. The most restrictive license, others can download and share work, but must credit and link back to the original author and cannot change the original work or use it commercially. For more detailed information on each license type, you can visit the About Licenses page on the Creative Commons website. You can find the link on your handout. Let's take a look at this short video that illustrates really well how to use Creative Commons content. Let's say you created a YouTube video and you wanted to add some music, but because of licensing restrictions, you couldn't use just any song you wanted. That's where Creative Commons comes in. Creative Commons licenses add flexibility to the restrictions of traditional copyright. For instance, you can use any Creative Commons material for free. Creators choose these licenses for their images, music, films, and other types of content in order to share it with as many people as possible. Of course, there are still a few conditions you'll need to follow whenever you use Creative Commons material. Depending on what the creator wants, they may require you to give proper credit or forbid you from using their work to make money. These conditions can be used in various combinations to make a license more flexible or restrictive. To find the license terms of a work, look for a Creative Commons logo and a link. Then follow that link to see the specific terms. If you want to find some of this material for yourself, you can start by using the search engine of your choice and looking for something like Creative Commons images or videos. Also, many media sites provide a Creative Commons search filter, such as YouTube, Flickr, Free Music Archive, and many more. To legally use Creative Commons material, all you have to do is follow the terms of the license. You don't even need to ask the creator for permission. Keep in mind, however, that if you break the terms of the license, there could be legal repercussions. Whenever you need content for your next big project, you can gain access to a wealth of material, all thanks to Creative Commons. GCF Global, creating opportunities for a better life. Fair use. So we've reviewed copyright, public domain, and Creative Commons. But what about using resources that fall under these categories in the educational domain? The Fair Use Doctrine, part of the 1976 Copyright Act, explains the exceptions for copyrighted works in nonprofit educational uses. Under Fair Use, copyrighted work can be used without permission from author for certain teaching or research purposes, 
and can be reproduced for libraries and archived under special exemptions. Under the Fair Use Doctrine, copyrighted works can be used only under certain conditions, such as for commenting purposes, news reporting, teaching, scholarship and research for educational research purposes. You can review the Educational Fair Use Guidelines for specific classroom uses. The link can be found on your handout. Even with these conditions, fair use has always been a gray area to cite when using copyrighted works. It may not be as simple to say, I'm using it for educational purposes, to be considered using within fair use guidelines. So there's one way to test if the usage of the resources is within fair use guidelines, is to apply the four-factor rules for fair use. Number one, what is the purpose and character of the use? Number two, what is the nature of the original copyrighted work? Number three, how much or what parts of the original work will be used? And number four, what would be the impact of the new work for the potential market of the copyrighted work? Even if after answering these questions, you're still not sure if your use falls under fair use guidelines, the best place to get more help and advice would be the library. Check out the Copyright and Fair Use Library Research Guide for additional resources, as well as the library copyright experts contact information. You can find the link to that resource on your handout. So to summarize this lesson, copyright, creative commons, and fair use are guidelines that you should be aware of and follow when deciding what types of resources you want to use in your online courses, including images. Part one of finding and using images module provided you with a good overview of each of these areas and what to keep in mind as you use different resources in teaching. With these guidelines in mind, part two we will review how to use an image within these rules, where you can find them, and how to properly format and optimize an image to be used in your online course environment.